it's Lori here. I'm back. I'm actually here to do my Owl Crate unboxing and a bit of a book haul. Um, and I also sort of want to talk through the books that I have received that I've actually read to kind of keep myself a little bit on task and let you guys know that I am been following that through because I am sort of going to steal Super Space Chicks ideas and only allow myself to buy the amount of books every month that I read. And I'm even going to try to make that 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 amount a little bit less so we're going to do my owl crate unboxing my book haul and then I'm going to kind of go over the books that I read this month the amount of books that I read in February and then what books recently that I read that I um that I wound up picking up and reading to just kind of hold myself a little bit accountable so the owl crate unboxing that I'm going to do is for magic unleashed this is the pretty cover that we got I think I know the book but it could be wrong. The first thing I'm seeing is a hairbrush. Ooh, and this is a pretty hairbrush. I'm probably actually going to keep this one. I literally just bought a hairbrush for my for my um, for my job. Um, but this one has this pretty thing on the back. I don't know what that's from, but I'll look it up at the end. But this is a very, very pretty hairbrush. Nice bristles, and I can always use another one. So I'm going, I'll probably stick that in my room and have it here. The next thing I'm seeing is Dolores Gerard, the Soap Librarian Owl Crate Exclusive Bath Salts. Let me see if this smells good. Ooh, that smells very, very good. I don't actually have a bath, so I'm probably going to probably give this to someone. I will probably bring this to work and see who wants it. It's Dolores Gerard. I'll look that up. I, I think that sounds familiar. But also the pen is this. It's a little bit glary, but there's the pen. Um, another thing that I'm seeing is the Poison Kitchen Checkoff Prague, um, designed by Literary Ghosts. Again, I'm gonna look that up. I will. I'm gonna try to take a few pictures and maybe put it on my Instagram. Um, the next thing I'm seeing. Ooh, I love these pouches. Fight takes work. Follow your heart. And I actually really enjoy these pouches. I'm actually going to use this one to put all of my um, bullet journaling supplies in. So this is actually perfect. I've actually been waiting for one. So I'm actually going to use this as my bullet journaling supplies and my journal supplies. So this one's actually pretty good. Um, I'm sorry, my poster fell. Sorry, I poster my thing. Oh, I see a box. And this is a collectible book tin. Ooh. Ooh, this is a bigger one than we've gotten on all our other ones are very, very little. And this is a Red London Volume 1, inspired by the Shades of Magic Secrets. And this is with in collaboration with Victoria. Ooh, this is a pretty one. Magic and Madness, the Marvish Monarchy. Blood was magic, new met there, it thrived. This one is a big one. Our other ones we have are sort of little. Um, but this one is made in actual... Um, design with collaboration with Forensics and Flowers. And it's an Alan Punta Sousa. Ooh, I'm actually probably just going to put this on my bookshelf. This is very, very pretty. Um, and I actually do use them to store things. I actually might bring this one. I might bring this one to work. We'll see. But it's actually very, very nice. And it's very, very well crafted. They actually come up with such unique ideas that I never would have thought of. Um, but the book is the one that I did predict. And that is The Gilded Ones by Niyama Forna. I've heard so much things about this book. I think it's released they got pushed a couple of times due to covid but if i remember it's about a girl she winds up getting her blood gets drawn and it's revealed that she has gold blood and that um is something that i think will leads her to either get killed or something and she winds up going on an adventure to work for the army so this one sounds really good i'm definitely going to add this to my tbr hopefully soon um but i'm trying to catch up on my past owl crate books um and then we also have this wonderful newsletter i don't see i see a couple like a little minor differences between the actual cover but and then not um there's an interview with the author there's an interview with forensic flowers um and then there is the postcard for the next box which is of witches and wonder and in that box you're gonna get a item design um by taka sykes which is awesome i again i, I say this so often when I'm unboxing Owl Crate boxes, their boxes always just put a smile on my face. And nine times out of ten, it's always a book that I either want to read 
or um, am excited to read or have heard about, or it's even a book that I've never heard about. And sometimes those books are sometimes the best ones that I get in these book boxes. So I just like that the dedication that both Owl Crate Junior and Owl Crate Senior give to their, you know, to their customers and clientele. I've never been really disappointed by a box from them. So now I'm going to go do my book, um, my book haul, and then I'm gonna chat through the recent reads that I tackled recently. Talk to you guys. Talk to you guys in like one minute. Okay, just go go get the box. So oh, right now I have actually read about 11 books and I think that's definitely going to be a bit more because I actually did read quite a bit more but right now I've read 11. I definitely did not buy 11 books this month and I think I'm well under my limit. So let's get into it. There was a book convention um, like last month at the very end so I got a couple of arcs sent to me from, um, from um, Wednesday books so this is Troubled Girls. Um, a novel um, by, I don't know who it's, who's this book is from, um, but this is Julie Lynn Rubin, and I think that this is a queer reimagining of Thelma and Louise with the aesthetic of Riverdale for fans of Minnie McGinnis and Courtney Summers, Trouble Girls, it's powerful beat and, and brilliantly gut, gun punch. This one does come out in June, and I have been looking for some, some more queer reads to read on my agenda, so this one sounds really, really awesome, and I actually have... I actually wanted to tackle a more of like a, a historical fiction inspired read, so this one might be perfect. Um, another one that I picked up is another um, LGBTQ read, and it's called Cool for the Summer by, De um, by Dahlia Adler, and this also comes out in May. I really hope to get to this one soon. It really seems like a perfect, quick, summery read. I also picked up The Dead in the Dark by Courtney Gold. I um, mean, this is a, do, a, a debut supernatural thriller about two girls who fall in love when they team up to stop an evil presence terrorizing their small town. Another queer representation, one that I'm really excited for. And the last one is Tokyo Ever After by uh, Marco Jean. This is May. And this, um, but when she, I think it's about a girl who's living in California, but then when she winds up going to visit her dad in Japan, everything changes. And I'm sure there's a romance. So those are the physical arcs I got from Wednesday Books. I also got one other one, um, and that is The Widow Queen, and this is from Tor, um, and this is a translated work, and this one comes out, I don't know when it's supposed to come out. I think it's supposed to come out, um, it doesn't actually tell me. But I feel like it's coming out in March or April, and this is like a, like a fantasy, adult fantasy read. I'm really excited to dive into this one as well. So these are ones that I'm hoping to tackle soon, um, but I, they were arcs that were sent to me, um, which is exciting. <laughs> Order this month was Muse by Brittany Cavallaro, um, and this is like a book set in, in 1893. Honestly, I'm not quite sure what this book is about, but I really like Brittany Cavallaro's writing, so I wound up picking it up. It's not that long, and I think it is a dazzling in a revolution, love, friendship, and reimagined America. So I really don't know what this book is about, but Brittany Cavallaro is one of those authors that I really want to give a good shot to, so I'm happy that I picked this up. I also got a couple special editions from Owl Crate. I got a copy of Holopox, The Hunt for Morgan Crow by Jessica Townsend. This was in the book box that I got. And I also got the copy of All the Tides and Fate by Adeline Grace, which is actually on my next month TBR, I hope. And I also got two special edition copies from Good Choice Reading. One, and they're both signed, which is why I go from to Good Choice Reading. It did, did take a while to get here for them. But A Vow So Bold and Deadly by Bridget Kimmer, which I actually read this month and I really, really like this one. And then Lore by Alexandra Bracken and a lot of my books from Alexandra Bracken are already signed these I actually already read so they are not in that pile because I read those and I'm going to talk about those in a little bit but those are like the YA like those are like the YA books that I wound up buying and then the last two are some non-fiction books that I'm hoping to tackle in the next couple of months my non-fiction books I'm not going to add to like my list because I, it just takes me a couple of months to read those. Um, but yeah, let's, kind of, let's get into the two nonfiction books that I want to pick up. One was Hood Feminism, Hood Feminism by Mickey Kendall. I've actually heard really good things about this book from a couple of people on BookTube. 
And I do want to sort of tackle a little bit more into this into this concept. So I'm really excited to get into this one. And it's not that long. I will probably read it over the summer. And then the next one that I want to read, I actually have to get a prior book to this one. Um, I want to read Silver Springs. But this one is How to Avoid a Climate Disaster by Bill Gates. And I just saw this. And I have been watching him a lot over the past year due to a bunch of different things. But I heard about this book and I just had to get it. So these are the two nonfiction books that I picked up. And also some of the e-arcs that I got set through NetGalley recently. Um, oh, I have to add one. I also got um, the new Emily Weberly and Austin Sigmund Broca one. That was like so recently and I didn't even get to write that down. Um, but some of the other arcs that I got is Mouse Watch 2, which is a Disney book. I got Gamora and Nebula, which is an e-arc from Disney. I got Ten Truths and a Dare by Ashley Elston, which I actually wound up reading. Into the Darkness, Hello, Cruel Heart, which is a Cruella de Vil retelling. And Emily Weberly and Austin Sigmund broke a news book, which is really exciting. So those are like the e-arcs that I got, and I have made a little list, and I'm going to try to tackle these. So basically, I am really, once, this is kind of my TBR list. So once I read a majority of these, I can do some shopping. And I only had one left, which is Smash It, from my last list. So that's why I did a little bit of book shopping, because my mom took me shopping. So we're now we're going to talk about the books that I wound up finishing that I physically bought. This is the, the this is this is something that I'm so bad at. I really buy books and then I just never read them. So I did actually read Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. I got that in January. I read Over the Woodward Wall um, by Deborah Harkis. I read that one. I read You Have a Match by Emma Lord. I read Lore. I actually now have three copies of Lore. Um, and I read Aval So Bold and Deadly. The only ones I haven't read is Smash It and Hidden Sins. So those are the two books that once I complete this list, I'll be a little bit better when I move on to this much longer list. Um, and let me just count this up. One day left in February, I wound up reading about 17 books, which is pretty spectacular if I do say so myself. And I only bought nine books or received nine physical books. So that being Cool for Summer, Dead in the Dark, Tokyo Ever After, Trouble Girl, Widow Queen, Muse, um, Gilded Ones, Hollow Pox, Tides, and Fate. So it's only nine books that I physically added to my TBR, and I added a couple virtual books, um, but I do want to make some progress on those as well. So I wound up reading 17, and I only got nine physical books, which is actually not that bad. Next month, I hope it's going to be even less. But, you know, being a book, being a book lover is a troublesome task. But I, so I did actually complete my goal. I wound up reading 17 books. And I only acquired nine physical books, which is definitely good. So let me know what is your favorite book that you got this month. And if, if, you know, how your reading and book buying went this month, I'd love to hear in the comments. And I'll talk to you guys soon for my next video. Bye.